as you put it. It's not been the best of weekends. We, um, anyone who watches our videos and watches our stuff will see, um, there's two of us here. It's, um, it's me and my, my friend Dom, um, who's a epic fabricator, welder, mechanic. We work together, we've worked together for five years. I mean, I think in theory he works technically as an employee, but it's never been like that. He's a, he's a friend. And very sadly, this weekend, um, we lost Dom very unexpectedly. Um, sadly, it appears his body quit on him before the rest of him quit on him. He made 53 years old. Um, and uh, I think we're all still <laughs> a bit in shock. There isn't really terribly much to say. I've we dealt with what happened. I mean, we knew he was ill, but he was a stubborn sod, and you never quite knew by the look of things quite how ill he was, because he's one of those boys that doesn't tell anyone anything and keeps it all to himself. So um, this is his last job he um he finished this off for me on thursday night waved me bye bye and then he um he never appeared friday so i've done what well i can do i suppose you've um i've tidied his tools up i've um put spanners away i've closed his tool boxes i don't really know what else to do what do you do um and we'll make sure he gets a damn good send off and we sort everything out for him because he was a single fella um but a lovely fella, I mean, a, a proper, proper gent, country boy, proper accent. I mean, he made me sound properly understandable. I mean, he came from New Milton and he spoke a language within a language that no one understood. Took me two years to get the hang of it. But just a very, very capable fella, a machine tool maker by trade, um, an engineer, an incredible electrician and just a really good, honest, decent fella. So things here at 60 Diesels are a bit sad and not quite what they were last week. And, and I'm not quite sure where we go from here. I mean, we're not going to give it up. But, um, but a big part of this business was Donald Feltham. I mean, um, we know him as Dom. He gets called John, Tom, everyone, everyone gets his name wrong. Um, and this place ain't going to be the same without him. So we're going to try and continue on puts me there on my own, not that that's his or anyone else's fault. And um, well, I don't think I can replace him. I can't replace him. I mean, it took me 20 years to find someone that capable and I don't think I'll find that again. So things might be a bit rocky for the next few weeks because the workload has doubled, trebled, let's be honest. With the two of us, we did we ever it through some stuff. Um, and obviously we've got funerals and paperwork and bits and, and, and stuff to, to sort out. So if we're a bit slow and a bit behind, I'll, I'll apologise now, but there's a damn good reason for it. So anyway, how 60 diesels. I'm probably one of the saddest days for a while. Hello, how 60 diesels. This, new acquisition. So this is a 2010 Five one five, so five tons. Five point five. Five point five ton. Trim rear wheeled nine oh six sprinter. Very very last of the OM six four sixes before they introduced the six five one. Um, one owner from new, done around just on three hundred thousand kilometres. Um, belonged to a local toilets company running running uh, toilets, running portable toilets would make more sense, and um. Now, a friend of mine, they had some big end issues with these in the beginning, that the bolts that used to hold the big end caps together had a bit of a tendency for snapping and falling out, which tended to mean we had fairly spectacular engine failure. Um, I think it was a recall to change them, and I'm not sure this one actually ever got changed. So at about 165,000 kilometres, it decided to do that none of itself. And um, then a brand new crated Mercedes 646 fitted, which is under here, which has run perfectly until been parked a year now it started losing water so diagnosis head gasket failure not a particularly great problem um, and then they kept it in a barn for a year just a spare they were going to do it then they decided they weren't and here it is so um 
what we are going to do, or our Tripsy toilet body off the back of it, that has gone, um, is do the head gasket, tidy it up, then decide whether we sell it or we turn it into something or whatever that'll come later because it's shamefully it is a medium wheelbase it would be lovely if it was a long wheelbase but we couldn't make it a long wheelbase um so this video is ed gasket on a 646 906 sprinter right so 646 so 2.1 something something nearly 2.2 this is the twin turbo version being a 515 so the bigger horsepower um, and what we have got to do is get this big ugly bit that you can see off so obviously air box out um air breather out for the uh, cab air we'll take that out of the way it makes life a bit easier drain the coolant and then we're going to have to extract two turbo chargers a manifold a load of pipes a load of injectors chains stuff to get that bit out of here um, and obviously you need your short man step because um, I'm only five foot six and this thing's quite tall. Um, I can lean over the top like that, whereas otherwise my little scraggly legs don't get me anywhere near. Anyway, less yaggering, more fixing. The, um, the big in that manifold out he's over there so basically that clears that side of the engine we've also got a wiring harness to move out of the way which is on the unplug a minute there just we haven't managed to break any liquor yet so move this that up and out that can go and sit over here which is me out of the way of me now so next cunning plan is Pull. Uh, I'm going to start lubing on the injectors, try and get them out, and then obviously we've got to drop this turbocharger. And I am going to get rid of this expansion tank because it's in my way, and if not, I'm going to sort of drop that down in there out of the way, and on we go. Finally, my lord was number two injector stuck in there. I hammered, bashed, wiggled. In the end, we've got a little doofer that screws on an injector and allows you to put an engine crane on it. So we picked the van up with an engine crane, hammered on it some more, pop, out she came. So whether that injector is now any good or not, uh, time will tell, but to be honest, they're easy enough changed as long as they're not stuck in. Remember to put a nice Mercedes lubricant on them. Works a treat. Right, so what I'm going to do now, obviously you'll see inlet manifold has gone, I'm probably repeating myself, fuel pumps have gone, that's all swung over there, so I'm going to drop this ear turbocharger off, I'll leave this rocker cover on for a minute, try not to get too much shit in the engine, but it doesn't really matter because this bit's coming off. Once this is mobbed over that way, we'll run it up on its timing marks, drop the chain, or pull the tensioner, drop the chain, um, tensioner is down there, and then we are somewhere near fishing it once we've taken cans and stuff out and then we'll see what's happened underneath. <music>
I'm sure you've just seen, um, that is, the turbocharger is hanging off one side. What I'm probably gonna do is this away from the head. I'll sneak the head out of this side of it, and then we'll have a look and see if we can lean it further over there, because we don't want it rubbing against the cylinder head when we have to try and drop it back on. So, um, you saw me drop the timing chain, drop the tensioner out, um, the, whip the cams out there, quite simple. You can take it all out as one big pack. So basically, I now have two, four, six, eight, ten big head bolts. And then in theory, that big ugly piece there should come out. It is run over on them, um, somewhere near top dead centre. Not that that matters at this point in time because we're going to end up waving pistons around and cleaning things. And, um, and you can just drop the timing chain down in there because it's easy to fish back out. It doesn't disappear. But obviously remember, if you are turning it over, um, you need to hold the chain up to move it. Otherwise you're going to drag the chain in and chew up the chain with the guides up. Right, back to some head bolts. <laughs> for a bit of a look but I reckon we've got almost failure between, <laughs> between one two the gaskets going between the cylinders if you look here let me bring you in you can have a look right so we just quickly pop off so you can see me lift the head off now I reckon there's that's our cause of our cooling system so we've got a blow between there and there and if you look down through the middle here it's like it was actually starting to fail Pretty much every cylinder, which might explain for the slightly random compression test on it. So anyway, that's easy. So you can see it on the gasket that we've got sort of soot. Oh, that soot, that soot uh, between the. That side's not all right. Yeah. So we'll come over here quickly. Look at the head. So you can see all the way here, and then basically. It's blowing across to, I reckon, that gallery very minorly. So we'll get this head skimmed, cleaned up, and um, order some new, <laughs> some new gaskets and some new bolts. And I think I'm going to take this turbocharger out completely, lean him out of the way for putting it back on, because it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Right, so I think we'll leave that one in for the day. We're going to have to strip the head, send that off, have that skimmed. <laughs> check it needs skimming and then send it off and have to get if it's skimmed. Um, I'll get on to Mercedes, order all the gaskets up now I know what I need. Um, and uh, we'll leave that here, save it being too long. The next one might be putting it back together, but it probably won't be next because it's going to take a few weeks to get all the bits ordered. And obviously because this is a um, sort of a stock vehicle, it has to um, fit in with all the other stuff that we have to do daily. Right, now, 16 diesel. <laughs>